Hey guys, Corey here, the Art Archaeologist, and welcome to this Treasure Hunting Tuesday video. So I am very excited about this little project today. These are, this is Make Your Very Own Inchy themed watercolor palettes. Now the great thing about these is that they are presented in a beautiful way. They have all the information that you need, plus they are this really fun little travel sized uh, palette that you can take with you on the go. So I've, you get six of these out of one sheet here and I'm quickly gonna go over the measurements and show you how to do this part and it looks more complicated than it is for sure. And then we're gonna do this beautiful little earth and sky palette together. So what you're gonna need is a pencil. I like to use mechanical pencils. They're my favorite. Um, you need an eraser. This eraser is just not enough. So I really love these retra retractable erasers and I got these online on eBay. You can just put in mono eraser or retractable eraser and they'll pop right up for you. And then this is a Sharpie fine pen here. So, and I just like to use, I like to write everything in pencil first, as you can see here. Let me back you up. I definitely like to do everything in pencil so that I can erase and you want to be really careful not to paint over your lines because when you're all done, you can erase all your pencil lines and have this really clean, beautiful little palette. So uh, you need those things and of course you need a ruler. But here like I was saying I like to write everything in pencil and then I just go over it when I'm laying in bed in pen when I have a little extra time. So now let me go ahead and put up the measurements for you and then you'll be able to refer back to those easily. Right. So I like to start out across, as you saw with my little guest check page here, and I like this is this is 12 by 9 paper, by the way. Let's talk about that for a second. I used to always get Canson mixed media paper and Canson watercolor paper at Walmart because that's the best price that I've found. Well, they quit carrying Canson for some reason, and now they're carrying this Grumbacher. And so I went ahead and picked this up. It's heavily textured, it's, so I'm sure it's cold pressed. It doesn't say here, but I'm sure it is. And then this is 9 by 12 size, 140 pound, 300 GSM. So these little inchy um, travel palettes are based on a 9 by 12 inch paper pack, okay? So like I was saying, now you want to go across the page first. So I want to line this up and the first measurement I want to make is four and a half, right down the center of the page. Now what I like to do is do a few marks. I'll do four and a half plus I also want to add four and a quarter and four and three quarter at the same time. So I'll just do a little tick mark on all three of those measurements. And then of course you've got to move down your page one or two more times. You really can get away with two. You can see here where the lines are a little bit darker there and there. And there's a massive temptation to just do one set of lines and then draw it, but I promise you, your page will end up crooked. So guard against that by making a couple tick marks, okay? So now that you've got your center three lines, four and a quarter, four and a half, and four and three quarter done, I have put those at the top because I think it's easier to start with your center base, okay? And then you wanna come over here. I like to have 
this border around my paper here. And then these are my special palettes. So I wanted to lay ownership to them <laughs> and put my name on it because I created it. And then at the top, I gave myself an extra quarter of an inch for the title of the palette. So this is a half inch total. And then there's a tiny quarter inch space underneath to put your um, brands of paints. And I use more than one palette. So um, I, I need that space. Now, if this is too small for you, of course, you can always adjust this to the way you want it. But I'm going to go ahead and go through how I've done it. So to get this border, I've got a quarter inch here from the edge of my page. Well, to get my inches now, I'm going to have to compensate for that. So that puts me at one and a quarter two and a quarter, three and a quarter, and then your four and a quarter line has already been made for you if you did it to begin with. So then you've got your quarter, one, two, three and a quarter. Now what happens, and it gets a little tricky, but it's it looks way harder than it really is, okay? So you've got your four and a half mark and your four and three quarters. So again, you've got to compensate, but now you're gonna end up jumping to three quarter because that's where we're at here. So then your next measurements will be five and three quarter, six and three quarter, seven and three quarter, and eight and three quarter. And then that gives you your quarter inch border on the side. So let's go ahead and just run over these um, down the page measurements real quick here just to keep things simple. I'm lining up my tick marks. Let me bring you in. Okay, so I've got my tick marks lined up right here so that you can see them a little bit darker. And then of course you wanna go do a couple marks down the page again, as always. Okay, so now when you go down the page, I start with a half an inch for my, now you don't wanna do your center mark on this cause you're getting six palettes out of this page. So you wanna start at the very top of your page and do your half inch mark for your titles, okay? And then you wanna go three quarter. And if you just copy this straight down, if you like these palettes and you like this look, then just trust the measurements and copy it straight down and I will go over them with you real quick here. We've got a half inch, three quarters of an inch, and then you want to jump one and three quarter, two and three quarter, three and three quarter. Now that we're here, I've got, um, of course, 12 in three parts is four inches. So you want this section to end within that four inch mark. So now my next title area is going to begin at four inches and I want to jump a half an inch to a lot for that extra space. And then I want to give myself that quarter inch to write in my palettes. And then of course that puts us at four and three quarter and then you'll jump to five and three quarter. Let me get this in here. It's kind of weird doing it like this here. Okay, how's that? That'll work. So we've got five and three quarter, six and three quarter, seven and three quarter, and then eight again to compensate for your third title, of course. Eight and a half, eight and three quarter, and then you jump to nine and three quarter, 10 and three quarter, and 11 and three quarter, and that clearly ends up giving you this quarter inch allowance at the bottom so that you can, on your bottom two palettes, these two here, you will still be able to get this little part here. Now, I apologize for being so ultra kind of anally thorough about this, but I get questions when I'm not. So please do not, I do not want to insult anybody's intelligence. Absolutely not. Okay, so now you've got all your measurements and Let's go ahead and move on to palettes now. So I went ahead and made a list just for this video. I made a list of the colors that I'm using for this palette. My favorite 
color combination is blue and brown. Different shades of blues, different shades of browns, and creams, of course, too, included with that. So I'm very excited about this palette. I'm calling it Earth and Sky, and these are the colors that I have chosen to put in this palette. Now, I don't normally do this. I usually pick my colors, I lay all my watercolor palettes out, and I make a big giant mess, and I just go very intuitively. But for the sake of the video, I wanted to have everything prepared. Now, what I've got here, this VP stands for the vintage, let me back up a tiny bit, stands for this vintage pastel. And then of course the CURR is currents and the MT is master's touch. And I'm gonna get into this in just a second. And then the COM is complexion down here. So that's how I kind of just keep everything organized. And here's these colors if you like them and you have them. The whole point for me of doing this is to get an intimate knowledge of the watercolors I have so that I can work from where I'm at right now without having to go and buy stuff. I have been collecting my little Prima watercolor kits for a while now and I have a number of them. I don't have them all, but I have quite a few. And the range of colors is amazing. I've already made a couple videos on using these. And in the near future, we're going to get into a lot of watercolor projects. But I like the technical side of this because this gives you an opportunity to really build a relationship with your colors and to get a fast working knowledge of, okay, I want this palette to look like this, so I'm going to use these colors and that's what makes these so handy okay I want this emotion I want to go ahead and have this vibe and this energy in this painting and then you grab this you know exactly which colors you need to grab and it makes it so so easy so now I'm gonna in a minute I'm gonna set all those up for us to go ahead and do this but I want to talk about this master's touch palette here now I got this at Hobby Lobby Lobby and I like it and I don't they back you up yet again okay so this I went ahead and put master's touch watercolors in just because I'm kind of that way now it comes with this big palette which I like and then I just took a, and made a graph of this right here now there's two things I do not like at all about this palette. Um, I, it has to be said, all of these are tube watercolors. They did not come like this. I created this. This palette came completely blank and you fill your own. The things I don't like about it is the pan is open. See how they're all, they swoop upwards. So if you move this or tilt this, your colors fall out and they get all mixed up. And that happened to me and it was a pain. I had to go through and re-put all my colors in because when they dry out, they can come apart and come out. So I don't like that about it. And I also don't like how big it is. So neither of those things are working for me. I ha saw in a video, Somebody had a Prima. I, I've seen these palettes where you can take these little pans and just put them in a new palette. So I haven't searched for one. If you guys know about a big empty palette, let me know because I need to just get one and I need to just look, I haven't done it yet. But I wanted to make you aware of what's going on with this thing just to let you know there are setbacks to having this palette and the size of it just does not work for me at all. I want to be able to be on the go. So uh, I'm going to get a smaller palette for these colors, but I love these colors. Master's Touch, the indigo is just gorgeous. Let me pull you in. This is such an educational video. It's going to be a little bit longer, 
but you get a, such a nice range and you have enough area and you can get it in a smaller palette where you can um, fit a lot of colors in it. So these are the ones that I have bought so far out of the Master's Touch line. And um, this is what I've got here. The Indigo's beautiful, Payne's gray, olive green, gamboge. These are some of my favorite colors here. And then of course I love the browns here too. So now that I have talked about the palettes, I'm gonna go ahead and get everything set up and be right back. All right, now we're all set up and ready to paint. And of course for this part, you're gonna need your colors of choice and a little vessel of water. I'm just using a round. This is a number six round and it's a Princeton and I got this at Hobby Lobby and I really do like the Princeton line of brushes. And then I like to keep a squirt bottle handy for no matter what kind of artwork I'm doing, but it's especially handy for this so that you can pre-activate all your colors. I just went ahead and took out the ones I wanted and put them on a little palette just to keep it nice and neat. So now I want these colors pretty concentrated so that you get a good view of how uh, dark you can get them. And then of course you can always get lighter versions of all of your colors um, just by adding water. So let's go ahead and do this palette. like to bounce around that way I can put colors organically where I think they'll be more pleasing to me to look at my palette Okay, and it's that simple to come up with a really beautiful little travel palette. So let's talk paint real quick for a sec. On these Master's Touch colors that I've been collecting, and I get these at Hobby Lobby as well, uh, I really love 
the pigment and the quality of these paints. They're very nice. This is the indigo here and this is the Payne's Gray and then I've got the raw umber here and I believe that's the burnt umber there. So um, they are second to none when it comes to pigment. I really like these colors a lot and I wanted to show you real quick these cutie little Prima kits. I have done a little uh, palette video on how to do these where you just do a gradation of your colors. You take all your colors and I've got each one comes with 12 colors and so I've gone just darkest and lighter 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 so that you can get an idea of what kind of a range that your one single color can give you and it's really amazing and I've made these small enough to fit in my little travel palettes here and then it comes with this handy little thing here and I love this because it gives you the colors. I went through, now these are all individually wrapped which I don't really care for that. I think it's a lot of waste that's really unneeded but when you get them you have to unwrap them and when I unwrap these I always put the numbers go in the same direction. So the great thing about these being numbered is you can mix and match your kits and your palettes and you don't have to worry because you've got your number right here. So here's my ocean color 135. It's right there and it's third from the top so I can just pop that right back into place. They make it very very easy to be able to keep all your stuff together and then I've just made mine to fit nicely in here and I will link that video in an end screen to this video. I did want to show you this is all really starting to become dry now and I wanted to get everything marked before I forget what's what. But when you have a lot of these dark colors in your palettes and it's inevitable it will happen without a doubt if you're going to make these. You can take a little cheapo scrub brush just a real hard bristled brush get it very slightly damp and wipe off most of the water and then you can scratch away the pigment a bit where you want to write if you want to write on the color. I like to write right on the color. I love the way it looks as you can see with this periwinkle right here and I think it just adds to the whole look of the palette and it keeps it smaller. So that's a quick little solution to be able to write your stuff in and the added bonus of that is it shows you lighter values of that same color. So let's go ahead and look at the palettes finally. So these are the six little palettes I came up with in one piece of paper and they end up measuring four and a half by four. So they're just a really cute size. Here's the spring. And I'm leaving these long enough so that you can pause the video if you'd like to copy these palettes, you're more than welcome to. Let me just do one at a time here. Here's summer. This one's really fun. I wanted to do a bright color palette. I don't know how much I'm going to use this palette, but I do like the colors. Now, the great thing about this is, of course, that you've got your brand and then you've got your kits over here and then I've just done the color and O is for Odyssey. That way you can refer right up here. Oh, what's Trop? Okay, Tropicals. What's VP? Oh yes, Vintage Pastels. And then Master's Touch. I've just done MT4 on the Master's Touch with the color. So it makes it very, very simple for you to be able to refer to exactly what it is you're looking at. So there's spring, summer, autumn, and of course I have a winter. I'm very attracted to the autumn and the winter palettes. 
I'm attracted to all of them. The bright summer colors are not exactly my palette, but I think for a flower painting or something really whimsical and fun, that palette would just be perfect. And of course, you could just take, you know, let's say you're like, oh my gosh, this and this and this, these three colors together look so beautiful. These four colors together look so beautiful. And then you can just take a couple few colors out of one palette and really up your game when it comes to your coloring. This is has been just the most valuable thing for me to do. And here's my cave dwellings. This is one of my fa favorite palettes that I've made. But the great thing about this is, is now I have a very um, quick knowledge of my colors and where they're at and what kit I need to reach for and which colors I need to pull very quickly. That's the benefit of doing this for sure. And then the last but not least out of my six palettes is the Subtle Nature one. Now I really love um, muted tones and you can soften these colors straight out of the pan just by uh, watering them down a little bit more. For instance, let's take a look at this real quick. Well, that's two different colors. Uh, let me see if I can find... Okay, well, here's what I'm talking about. I kind of like stepped on my own message there. <laughs> but here's Cavern. And I, I, there's more water in this one than this one. So you can easily, easily adjust these to get different colors. And the beauty of using the scrubber like we just did on this kit here is that you can see automatically, oh, wow, I can get this really light shade of indigo. Or, oh, I can get a very, very pale gray sky with the panes gray if I really water it down. So there's, you get so many hues to each color. Now what I've done here is I went ahead and uh, wrote over all of this with black and then I just love these erasers. They are great as I've said and you guys see me using these all the time. But then you come in after your ink is good and dry and just run right over everything. I'm not gonna go too crazy because I wanna keep everything else intact while I make the rest of it. But I do wanna erase this palette real quick just to show you the absolute beauty you get. And it's very satisfying and fun to do the erasing as well, because <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'm part of the easily amused club and I'm glad I am because that could be really cheap but this kind of stuff makes me happy so then you end up with this just lovely little palette and it's so pretty to look at and so fun to use because all the lines are gone. And so of course you wanna do your lines as light as you can. I have a bit of a heavy hand and I struggle with getting my lines erased entirely, but you know, it just takes of course practice like everything else. So I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial today, this treasure hunting Tuesday video. And if you did hit the like for me hit the subscribe hit the bell notification and come on back for more fun tutorials i will see you real soon and have a great day